Hey guys, Nick aka the one and only Nick's Games, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to start a server in Minecraft 1.8.1. Sadly, however, this is not a 24-hour server, meaning it's not up all the time, even when your computer's off and whatnot. This server is not going to be live. The only way to get one of those servers is to pay a little bit of money and buy one. That being said, I've got a perfect solution for you for just $4 a month. You can go to rkt.us slash apex and get a 24-hour server that is completely awesome. I love Apex. They are an awesome, awesome company. I believe they have the best Minecraft servers out there. I personally give you my recommendation to go to rkt.us slash Apex, check them out, and get a 24-hour Minecraft server there today. It's the first thing in the description down below. All that stuff. Anyway, guys, if that's not what you want to do, if you're fine with only having a server that is up whenever you're on your PC and you're running the server actively and all of that stuff, not up 24 by 7, whether you're asleep or not, then this will work for you. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get on into it. First off, we want to go to the second link in the description down below, minecraft.net slash download. Come over here to where we see multiplayer server, and then right here, download minecraft underscore server dot one dot eight dot one dot exe. That's what we want to download, so we're going to click that. It is then going to download right here. We can then minimize this and see it downloading on our desktop. If it isn't on our desktop, we can get the Windows key and our keyboard and R at the exact same time. Type in downloads, hit enter. It will be right here in our downloads folder. If it is in your downloads folder, go ahead and drag it to your desktop just for ease of use. Once we've got it in our desktop, we want to right click anywhere on a desktop, doesn't matter where, and create a new folder that is titled whatever we want. In my case, I'm going to name this server 1.8.1. You can name it whatever. You can just name it server. You can name it my Minecraft server, my MC, whatever you want to name it. Doesn't matter. But just create a folder on your desktop. Open that folder and then drag what you downloaded, Minecraft underscore server dot one dot eight dot one. Drag that over into this folder. Now what we want to do is double click on it. Click run. It will then go through and generate things and do stuff as you can see there. Boom. And there is what we're looking for, the EULA. So what we want to do is double click on that. It'll open up in Notepad. We want to change EULA tr false to EULA true. EULA T-R-U-E. Just like that. Now only do this if you go to this website right here and agree to the end user license agreement found there. If your server's not going to break that, feel free to go ahead and change this to what I did, EULA equal true. This server's not going to break it, so we're fine and good to go. File, save. Close out of that, and we are good to go to go ahead and uh, double click on this again. So we double click on it, click run. It will then go through and generate things and open this and do all of that stuff. As you can see here, a lot more stuff is generated in the background. Once this opens, let's click it down here and go ahead and type STOP, hit enter. That will then close out of that, and that's how you stop your server by typing the word stop STOP in that box I just did. Once we've done that, we need to go ahead and hit the Windows key on our keyboard and R at the exact same time. Type in CMD for command prompt. Hit enter. And in this, we want to type IP CONFIG. IP config. Hit enter. And it'll give us a lot of information here that we need. Specifically, our IPv4 address and our default gateway. Both of which we are going to need for this tutorial. Let's start off with the IPv4 address. Where we want to use that is right here in the server properties file. To open this, right click on it, and then we want to open with, it'll open this box, and we want to double click on notepad. Once this is open, we want to find server IP, which is about halfway down the list right here, and uh, we want to type in our IPv4 address here, right? So whatever is over here in the IPv4 address, as you can see in my case, that's 192.168.1.3. For you, it's probably something completely different, but that's fine. Just copy whatever is right here next to the IPv4 address right there. Copy that number in. In my case, like I said, 192.168. 8.1.3. Yours might be .1.4.7, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, but whatever your IPv4 address is over here in the IP config in the command prompt, we typed IP config, it'll pull this up. Right over here is where you want to do that. I do want to mention that if you are on Windows 8, right? If you're on Windows 8, you want to hit the Windows key and then type in I and then type in CMD for command prompt. Then you want to right click on this and run it as an administrator. Then type ipconfig 
and it will work. If you're having troubles on Windows 8, that is how you can fix that. Nevertheless, we've got our IPv4 address copied over here. We want to go ahead and get file, save, minus out of that or close out of it. We don't need that open anymore. And now we want to right click in here and create a new text document, right? New text document. Doesn't matter what this is named right now. Let's go ahead and open it up. And in this, we want to put our bat files, which let me grab over here real quick. Boom right there it is these are our server bat files these are in the description down below now how many gigs of ram you choose as you can see these are separated one two three and four gigabytes of ram depends on how good your computer is and how many people are going to have on your server if you're going to have less than five people on your server you're good giving one gigabyte of ram more than five go two a ton of people go four it all depends on how many people are going to have on your server but you need to make sure that you don't go over half the amount of RAM your computer has, right? So let's go ahead and see how much our computer has in RAM. Go ahead and hit the Windows key on your keyboard up here or click the, uh, the Start menu. Go into Computer and then go into System Properties right here. Now, as we can see, installed memory or RAM for me is 16 gigabytes. That means the most I could use is 8. If you have 2 gigabytes of RAM, the most you're going to be able to use is 1 gigabyte of RAM for your server. If you have 4 gigabytes, the most you're going to be able to use is 2. That's how you can determine how much RAM you should use on your server. For the case of this tutorial, we're going to go all out and give 4 gigabytes of RAM. So, once you've decided on that, we can go ahead and copy this from the description down below. Then we can just simply go to this new text document we created right here, paste it in, boom, right? And then we want to file, save as, right? And we want to save this as run.bat, right? Run.bat, and we don't want to save it as a .txt document. We want to save it as all files, right? Make sure you save type as all files. If you don't, this won't work. Then click save boom there you go you can now close out of this and as you can see there's this run thing with these cog wheels right we're going to double click on that here in a second but first just delete this new text document because we don't want it uh, cluttering up our server now we can go ahead and double click on run right here so double click it it'll open up command prompt and uh, it's throwing an error nick why is it doing that no big deal right click on this edit it's because i didn't update this file from 1.8. Yours will not have that issue. So now if we go ahead and click File, Save, we can then double click on this, and boom, there we go. It went through, it's running things like that, opened this exactly how it should have done. We are good to go. As you can see, spawning, prepared, all of that awesome stuff, boom. Now we can type STOP over here. That will stop the server because uh, we don't want to run it anymore, but it is running now. Close out of that, and now we can go ahead and allow other people to join this server. We're going to port forward. Now, I know a lot of people freak out over port forwarding, but don't worry about it. I've taught hundreds of thousands of people. I've taught hundreds of thousands of people to port forward. We can do this. Let's work together on it. So, we're going to go ahead and open up a new tab. In this new tab, right here in the search bar, we're going to type in whatever our default gateway is over here in the command prompt where we typed IP config. In my case, that's 192.168.1.1. For you, it might be something completely different. But we're going to type that in here to our browser, and boom, it's going to pull up a login page. It might not be exactly like this, but it's going to pull up a login page of some type. It's going to ask for a username and password. Now, what is this? What is this username and password? This is the username and password for your router, the router that you use to get on the internet, right? So, how do you get this password? Well, go to the third link in the description down below. It will take you to this page right here where you can see all of the different types of routers honestly in existence today and click on the kind of router you have. Let's just uh, let's just say you have, I don't know, what could we do here? We could do a Cisco router. That's always a safe bet for everyone having. Cisco, a ton of people have Cisco routers, right? So we can come down here and see all of the default username and passwords for all the different Cisco and Linksys style routers and stuff. Go to the router in your house, see what model it is, come back here, and then find the username and password. In my case, I have already know those, but once you've found those, 
come back over here to the login page that we got to again by typing your default gateway into just uh, this search bar up here as some people may call it and then we can go ahead and type those in in my case that's admin and a custom password that uh, I've set go ahead and click login and it's going to log into your router it's going to look exactly or completely different most likely completely different from what you see here but that's okay we're looking for the same thing even though the UI the user interface what you see is different from mine we can still do this because it's the same style of thing what we're probably gonna want to do is go to advanced and then we're going to want to go to apps and gaming we're going to want to go to port forwarding port triggering one of the two in my case it's an advanced and then advanced setup again and then port forwarding slash port triggering for you it might not be that it might just be advanced port forwarding advanced apps and gaming whatever it is find port forwarding that's what you're looking for click on it it'll give you something like this what we want to do is add a custom service right that's what we want to do for port forwarding make sure port forwarding selected if yours combines port forwarding and port triggering it might not be like that it might just be port forwarding if that's the case you don't have to worry about that but what we want to do is add a custom service right it's then going to open this up we can name the service whatever we want in my case that's minecraft you can name it whatever it doesn't matter we want to do TCP slash UDP. If you can only choose one, you want to do this twice. All the information is exactly the same, but just do it once for UDP and then once for TCP. I, however, can do them both at the same time. External starting port, 25565. External ending port, 25565. And then with the internal IP address, this is going to be the IPv4 address that is right over here. 192.168.1.3 192.168.1.3 now we can go ahead and apply this and the hard part is over your server is now port forwarded awesome if you do have any issues with the server after this point I'd suggest coming back here rewatching this part of the tutorial making sure you do everything exactly how I did it it's very important this is where most people mess up it was very very simple but it is a, there's a lot of data there so make sure you do that correctly rewind and recheck it if you have to but just make sure that is correct once you've done that we can minimize this and uh, guess what we are ready to run our server and go ahead and test it out guys that's pretty much it that's the bulk of the tutorial everything else is just testing opping yourself and things like that so what we want to do here is double click on run so we'll double click on that it will then go through run the server open up this little dialog box for us where we can do things and it's kind of cool so if we want to go ahead and op ourselves I'm gonna go ahead and type op op and then my minecraft username you would put your username in there as well in this little nice box down here hit enter and it will then op us as you can see it mirrors over here opt Nick's games now let's go ahead and open up Minecraft and join this server, okay? Now I'm going to join this server locally, and then I'm going to join it with my public IP. Your friends will join it using your public IP, and I'll show you exactly how to get that. As you can see, Minecraft 1.8.1, I've not even played it yet. So we got to download this and play it all at the same time, but that's okay. It will then open it up, and up here we'll be able to see Minecraft 1.8.1 right there, 1.8.1. Now, once it opens up, we will simply go into multiplayer, and then we will go into direct connect. Now, I'm going to direct connect right here to my IPv4 address. This just makes the ser make sure the server is running properly and things like that. So, in my case, that is 192.168.1.168. Click enter it will then log into the server and bada bing bada boom there we go the server is now up and running in minecraft 1.8.1 locally but can our friends join it well we can see how can we see that very very simple we just want to go to google here and then we want to make a new tab go to google.com whatever once you go to google.com type in two letters i p hit enter and boom there is your public IP address for you on the screen right now you're seeing a black box because I don't want to give out my public IP that's a very very bad thing to do you only want to give out your public IP to people you trust if you want a public server 
right? That's not all hosted on your own IP. You have to buy one from someone like Apex Minecraft Hosting, who I personally love. Gave that at the beginning. I love Apex. RKT.us slash Apex. Amazing if you don't want to give your public IP out and want to have a public server. Nevertheless, once you've got your public IP, this is what you're going to give to your friends, right? To join your server. Awesome. So let's go ahead and open up Minecraft. Let's exit out of this. Disconnect. And then we can go back into multiplayer and we're going to direct connect, this time not to our IPv4 address, but to our public IP. There it is. Click join server. We will log in and boom, exactly how we are, exactly like it was previously. And guess what? That means your server is now up and running and your friends can join it. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. Subscribe if you haven't already. I make awesome Minecraft tutorials every single day of the week. Also, go to rkt.us slash apex to check out amazing 24-hour Minecraft servers. Those guys are awesome. They put a lot of work into their servers, and I believe they have the best Minecraft servers in the industry. So go check them out and get your 24-hour Minecraft server for just $4 a month. Anyway, guys, I'm Nick's Games. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I am out. Peace. And here's some videos you guys probably want to go check out. On the left is Nick's Craft Episode 8. That is my Minecraft Survival Series where I go play Minecraft 1.8 Survival. Have some fun. It's epic. Go check it out. I know you will enjoy it. And on the right is how to get texture packs in Minecraft 1.8. Do you want texture packs in Minecraft 1.8? I want texture packs in Minecraft 1.8.1. Why not go check out that video to see how to get them? Also, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I'm Nick's Games and I am out. Peace.